following message was recorded at The Way. For additional messages and information, log on to our website, www.thewaycolumbus.com, or email us at thewaycolumbus at gmail.com. Now, get ready to hear a word from God. The inconvenience of God. Look at your neighbor and say the inconvenience of God. Amen. And I'm going to have a a thematic scripture, very simple. It's Proverbs 19.21. And I'll be using this for the duration of the Fridays that I'll be speaking. And when you have it, say I have it. Proverbs 19.21. Actually, we're going to start with verse 20 through 21. So we're going to go with two verses. I'll be using the Amplified. I used to study with the Amplified, the old school Amplified. Amen. Amen. And when you got it, say, I got it. it. All right. In (laughs) In the scripture reads, hear counsel, receive instruction, and accept correction, that you may be wise in the time to come. Many plans are in a man's mind, but it is the Lord's purpose for him that will stand. When you begin to think about the Lord's purpose, basically we can substitute that word for his will. And just reading the verse, the two verses, something's being said that's being said, something that's not being said that is actually being said. We have two agendas here. Because he says clearly that men have plans. Men have ideas. Men have philosophies. Men have an idea of how things should go. You can just say, uh, in short, you could just say man's will. But regardless of your will, the following scripture says, or the following verse of that scripture says, but it is the Lord's purpose for him that will stand. I want to deal today with the inconvenience of God. We have to look at our culture, we have to look at our society, and many people say that we are in a microwave society. That anything that you want pretty much is at our fingertips. If you have a phone and you have the internet, you can order anything under God's green earth at the at the tips of your fingers. We know that culturally speaking, one thing that we hold above pretty much anything is your comfort. For one, many of us take elevators, and when there's two people in the elevator, I would just like to presuppose that one person is on one side of the elevator, and somebody else is on the total other side of the elevator. One thing we understand that we are a generation that likes our space. Don't get too close to me. Don't touch me. Don't get in my personal business. It's crazy because we live in the the age of social media. When they, if you read Facebook, if you read Twitter, if you see Instagram, everybody's putting their business out. But let someone comment on your status, and then you quick to say, or I've seen people quick to say. Get out of my business. What a, what, a, what a paradox. That we are a generation who's not bashful and puts everything out there, but yet and still we have mental barriers regarding our personal space. 
We say we're private on one hand, but on the other hand, we put everything out there. We take pictures of food. We take pictures of what we wear in Tuesday flow. Amen? Oh, we've all seen this before. It is the age of convenience that we live in. That we no longer have to wait in line to check out groceries. But if we got ten items or less, we can go through this self-checkout. I said it's Sunday, but this generation knows nothing about sacrifice. You can tell that this generation knows nothing about sacrifice because when you look at credit card debt, credit card debt has exploded. We don't have any idea or any concept of what it means to put money aside to pay for the $100 shoes. We don't have any idea or any concept of what it's like to save for a brand new car. We don't have any idea or any concept of what it means to budget. For after all, budget is just inconvenient. My God. I need it now. The party is this week. I don't know what I'm... I need it now. So we look at our generation, and we're a generation that loves and thrives in the, in the spirit of convenience. For if you lose your cell phone, there's going to be issues. We live in a generation where losing your cell phone is more important than losing one's virginity. <laughs> We will, we will tear the house up. We will do everything we can possibly do to find that cell phone, but we will celebrate virginity being taken or given away. So this is the culture we live in. And when I begin to research the word inconvenience, it simply means this, to be moved out or to have one's personal comfort disrupted. And we have to look at it this way also, that because we are a, a culture of convenience, there is a mindset that goes along with that. But see, us being called as Christians and us trying to walk with God and meet the mark of God, now we have a clash. Because we know, according to Isaiah, that his, his thoughts are higher than our thoughts. That his ways are different than our ways. And we know that at the end of the day, personal growth, because this is where God is trying to get us. How many of us know God is trying to get us to mature? Yeah. That personal growth ultimately comes from God. That Pastor Sean and I, we can preach, we can lay hands on you, we can throw oil on you, but at the end of the day, Pastor Sean and I, we're just sowers. We're just waterers of the word. But God gives the increase. And what I want to speak to us today regarding what God wants to do in our personal life and what God wants to do in this church is he wants to grow us up. There is a shift happening and that is in process concerning the way and there are some things that we have to get in order. There's some, some growth that has to occur when more people begin to come in this place. And I want to prophetically just declare to you today that God is going to put us in position that will inconvenience us. I'm talking real inconvenience. I'm talking about waking you up out of your sleep at five in the morning. I'm talking about God beginning to do some things that you have no earthly idea what God is doing, but it will inconvenience your life.
For growth never happens unless you get out the box. For the box inside of the box, the box is an area of comfort. Yes, yes. No one ever grows inside of the box. For if you do study on fish and you put a particular fish or any fish in a particular tank or aquarium, it stunts its growth. But if you put a bigger tank, you get a bigger tank and you put a fish, the fish will then assimilate. And God wants us to begin to assimilate, but how many of us know it's not going to feel good? Growth is never comfortable. I like to use uh, uh, exercising as, as a good analogy. That when you do push-ups and when you're doing the T-bar, when you're, what you are really doing is you are tearing muscle. That's what, the, that's what happens. You tear muscle. And, and, and the after effects of tearing muscle is what? You get sore. Because now new cells have to be reconstructed to accommodate the stretching. And God says what he wants to do in the way is, he says, I want to stretch you. Matter of fact, God says, I'm going to stretch you. And when I do this stretching, it's not going to feel good. But understand that the stretching that, is, that I'm bringing you is, is to expand you and to grow you. And God says, I'm a merciful God that I'm going to tell you I'm going to stretch you before I stretch you. So when the stretching happens, you don't get off the operating table. Yeah, yeah. God says today that I'm going to put you in position. I'm going to do some things in your heart. I'm going to allow some friction to come in the assembly because there's some growth that needs to happen because you have no idea of the people that are coming and the hurt that are coming and the, and, and the mistrustings that are coming that you have to be stretched and prepared and fully fit to handle. God says you are my people and I've called you. To endure what I'm getting ready to allow to happen. God wants to, God wants to grow us and to stretch us in three areas. The first one is relationship with him. God said there are many areas and characteristics of who I am that you have no idea of. And I'm going to have to put you into some positions and some situations so you can experience the real who I, some other facets of who I am. See, many of us have built memorials of who and what your ideology of God, who God is. But God says there's more. See, we've always been taught that if, if, if we want to expand financially, what do you do? You give. But that's just one dynamic of who God is. See, yes, God is a great return on investment. But do you know him as a son or daughter? What are you saying? What I'm saying is, see, sometimes when you don't have a dollar to give, God will just bless you because he's your daddy. That's living in sonship. That when my daughter comes to me and asks me, Daddy, can you get me this? I don't ask her, do you got 10% first? I don't ask her, well, what do you got to give me? And whatever you give me, I'm going to turn it for you. See, if you just stay at that level of knowledge, you'll never understand the totality of who God is. So you, you're trapped in this box that, well, God can't bless me because I don't have nothing to give him. <laughs> so God has to stretch you. God has to put you in a position where you don't have a dollar to give. Yeah. To show, so he can show you that I'm your daddy. Yeah. Yeah. That it ain't about giving me something all the time. Yeah. Yeah. But that I... And I, me being God, him being God, he will make the difference up. God says, many of us are too full with our ideas and concepts of who he is. So he can't pour any more in us. 
good. See, here's the thing about it. When you study men of God, you understand at particular points in history of their walk with God, God wrecks them. When's the last time God wrecked your theology? <laughs> Peter gets up and he says, I'm hungry. He feels hungry and a trance comes over him. And, and then God shows him all types of the beasts of the field. And then God says, slay and eat, Peter. And Peter says, in his fullness of who he thinks God is, God, I've never eaten that. It is unclean. I've never eaten anything unclean. But what does God say? Wreck this theology. Not having an idea what God wants to do. And this is what God is saying. God is saying, that, are you willing to let him wreck your theology? Because yet, that is a stretching. That is a, oh my goodness, God. I've done it this way all the time. But now you're telling me to switch it up? The Peter experience. God is... One thing about stretching, it feels like you're going to die. It feels like you're going to be at a breaking point. And one of the things the Lord showed me is that when he put Jesus up, <laughs> he was stretched. That his arms had to cover each side of the post yeah. of the cross. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what God wants to do with the way. He wants to stretch us. He wants to, he endeavors us to think differently about some things that we already have preconceived, trapped ideas about some things. See, we have assimilated some behaviors and customs of the world that we have not let God renew our mind in. For, for Romans says not to be conformed of the world. But he says to be transformed by the renewing of our mind. What does that mean? That means to think different like God. That means that when we have to wait, we don't sit there and pout like the world. But we are allowing patience to have her perfect work in us. Because there's something in patience, there's something in waiting that deals with the stretching and building of maturity. And God is calling us today to grow up. But the beautiful thing about it is, we get to practice on each other first. Yeah, 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 yeah. We get to practice telling each other, I love you. We get to practice telling each other, I'm, I'm sorry. Do you forgive me? Oh, I'm, 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 I'm declaring it prophetically. This ain't nothing. I, I, this is something I heard God say. God said, they're coming quickly, but there's a stretching I need to do in you first. That's, this is what he's saying. Because if you don't stretch, see, that's another thing. Sometimes, how many of us have ever had like a crick in our neck or in our back? What's the first thing we try to do to get it out of us? See, some of us got some crooks we don't know about. And God has said, it's okay. That's what, that's what God wants to do. I got somebody testifying in here, don't I? But this is, what, this is what God is saying. See, nothing is new under the sun. Nothing is new under the sun. God knows to get us ready, to get us in position. He's got to put our bodies in some positions that we ain't never been in before. My goodness. Two things I want to say before I leave today. I've been telling Pastor Sean that the Lord showed me that there's going to be a, a spiritual 
endowment of wealth that's going to hit this place. But the Lord said, don't, he didn't say get it twisted. I'm parathetically <laughs> inserting that. But he said, it's not for you. He said, it's for the Acts experience. When you, when you study Acts, when people were growing, when people were coming into the faith, that they were giving, that they were loving, that they were sharing. So when God blesses you, don't just put it on your feet. Don't just put it on your back. But there's some people coming who need that. God said, I'm going to give it to you. But the stretching is, can he trust you? See, God began to deal with me about giving because I give a lot of stuff away. But it's old stuff. It's stuff I don't have no value for. Is that really stretching? Is that real? Does it really hurt? Is it really a gut thing that I give you the the, the things I wore last year? The thing, the things I don't. No, 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 no. Give him the new suit. See this. This is what God is. This is what God is saying. <laughs> this is what God is saying. This is what God, I know. <laughs> I'm very choker with this. <laughs> but no, this is what God is saying. As we begin to pray today the Lord showed me also that this is obviously I knew it but he how many, how many of us know sometimes God begins to repoint some things out that you already know that you sometimes forget I'm not saying this because I'm co-pastor but I'm saying this because I totally 100 believe it and God showed us this we are in a pioneering ministry and you know what no pioneer worth the compass does any of that on their own how many trekkies do we have here what do they say about pioneering of, of voyaging on beyond both see I knew we had some trekkies obviously I'm not but it wasn't just but it just wasn't one man you are intricately involved in pioneering. We can't do this by ourselves. What does that mean? That means that you will disciple people. What does that mean? There will be cell groups that you will run in your own homes. What does that mean? That means you will lay hands on the sick. You will cast out devils. When Jesus pioneered it, he didn't do it by himself. He went and found 12 misfits. Misfits. One was a cusser and a fighter. One was a thief and a shyster. Shall we break it down? So we all in here have come from some various backgrounds. Some various sins. Some various addictions. But that's the glory of God. That he can use folly. He can use silliness. He can use stupidity. And flip an entire world. How many of us feel the pioneering spirit on us? God said, I did not choose you because of the way you look. I chose you because of your silliness and your foolishness and your issues. I tell God, thank God I'm silly. Thank God I'm stupid. Thank God I'm ignorant. Because those are the people God uses. God uses the underdog. God uses people who are shortcomers. This is what he this is how you know he's glorious. Just look at the, the just look at the, the rose with no petals. 
barely hanging on. This is what God. He's chosen you. Touch your name and say, He's chosen me. Yes, I got an attitude. Yes, sometimes I don't know how to tame my tongue, but He's chosen me. Yes, I've made some mistakes. Yeah, I got a track record of men and women longer than Albuquerque, but it can use me. This is what God. He chose you. He didn't look at the best. He didn't look at the brightest. He didn't look at the smartest. He chose the least among them. Know that he didn't choose you because of who you are. He chose you because of who you weren't. My God, my God, my God, my God. And there's gonna be some other underdogs that go that's gonna darken the door. There's gonna be some other crack addicts that's gonna darken the door. There's gonna be some other people full of demons that darken the door. But will you carry the pioneering spirit? Can God inconvenience you? Can people can call you in the morning when you're getting it and you're snoring and the slobber running down your mouth? Can God inconvenience you? I would say Christ in heaven before he was uh, clothed in, in flesh. He had it pretty good. God said, I need somebody to save man. Christ, you can inconvenience me. I'll lay the deity down. I'll lay it down. God, when he calls us, it's not going to be according to your convenience, but it's going to be according to his inconvenience. It's inconvenient to step out the box and say hi to somebody when you're an introvert. But the inconvenience of God, his ways are not like us. He's not going to move in your personality. He's not going to move the way that's, that's conducive to you moving. But he might have you speak when you're not one to speak. He might have you give when you're not one to give. It's because of his inconvenience to reach a lost and dying world. The question, will you be inconvenienced? God never does a thing on our convenience and on our terms. The inconvenience. It was inconvenience that that caused Peter to mingle amongst the Gentiles. Because now Peter's like, well, my Jewish boys know we don't rock with Gentiles. What, what, what will they say? What will they think of me? Who's willing to be inconvenienced for God? Who's willing to step out their personal box for God? This is what God is calling us to. That personal growth is coming if you're willing to be inconvenienced. If you're willing to do some things that you're not accustomed to doing. God says, who's willing? It's an inconvenience to be a pioneer. Because there's a risk. People can say, I told you how y'all did service. Wasn't going to work. Shouldn't your ministers all have uh, divinity degrees and seminarian degrees? No, we do it the way God says. That means if we got to do it, if it's a tougher road, it's a tougher road. But who's willing to be inconvenienced? Amen. Stand with me. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for listening. We hope this message has enriched your life. For more information, log on to our website, www.thewaycolumbus.com, or email us at thewaycolumbus at gmail.com. And remember, Jesus is the way.